Hey guys, Ashley D. Will here, and today I want to encourage you in the Lord. I am going to use uh, Neil Anderson's list of who I am in Christ. You can get it online. You just put it in there and it comes up. And I want to let you know that you are accepted, secure, and significant in Christ. Did you know that? That in Jesus Christ, if you're in Him, then you are fully accepted, you are completely secure, and you are very significant. Okay, I want to uh, give you some evidence and some scriptures as to why that is true. All right, let's talk about the fact that you are accepted in Christ. How can I say that? How can he say that? Well, let's go over the scriptures to show you that you really are completely accepted in Christ. Even the places inside you that you're too ashamed or embarrassed or afraid or um, places that you've kind of put in the closet, he even accepts those places inside you. That means you're fully accepted, head to toe, inside out, down to the quantum level, you are accepted in the beloved. Okay, let's go over some of these. We have John 1 12. Let's do accepted here. Okay, for accepted, we have John 1 12. What does that say? It says, I am God's child. Did you know that you are God's child? And that the more you assume a childlike heart, and the spirit of a child, a little child, the more you will grow spiritually. Did you know that? Well, that's true. So I want to encourage you to have a childlike heart with the Lord. The Lord has grown me not up, but down in my walk with him so that I'm literally four years old in the spirit. I am, and it's really fun. Okay, let's do the next one. John 15, 15. As a disciple of Christ, as a follower of Christ, I am a friend of Jesus Christ. Did you know that as a follower of Christ that you are his friend and that he is your friend? He is. The creator of the universe is your friend. Is that amazing? Let's write that one down. John 15, 15. So you can go look these up for yourself and meditate on them if you like. Okay, the next one is Romans 5, 1. What does that say? It says, I have been, past tense, justified. What does justified mean? It just means you've been declared righteous. It just means you've been declared righteous. If you're the prodigal son, it means you came running back home and he put the robe and the ring on and he's having a party for you. That's all. It just means you've been declared righteous and it's a very big deal. So Romans 5, 1, is a big deal. Why is it a big deal? Because the Lord has made you righteous through His righteousness. Did you know that you don't have any righteousness? None. You have none. And I have even less. I have no righteousness. None at all. It doesn't exist. And you do not have any righteousness. And do you know what? That's okay. We don't need any righteousness in and of ourselves. We don't need it. We do not even need it. Why? Because we've been given all the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ in him. That, my friend, is good news. <laughs> okay, let's do the next one. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. This is always one of my favorite verses. I am united, it says with the Lord, and I am one spirit with him. Did you know that you are united to the Lord spiritually down to the molecular, the subatomic level, all the way down, and that you are one spirit with him? That means that place inside you that God has sterilized and filled with his spirit, the spirit of Jesus is the Holy Spirit, um, that that place is the real you. It's the new nature. And that's the same place where the Holy Spirit lives. See? It's the same place because you're one spirit. 
You're one spirit. The new nature is one spirit with the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of Jesus. So they're all in there, all cozy, all together, overlapping, and they're very happy, and that is the real you. That is the real you. The next one is 1 Corinthians 6. 19 and 20. Oops. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have been, past tense, bought, purchased, with a price, a very high price. And I belong, that means you are property of the Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty. Okay? I have been bought with a price, and I belong to God. Do you know when you have a dog, and you say, this is my dog. You have him on a leash, you feed him, you take care of him. We are owned by God in that way, but in such a, a higher way. We're not just like a dog, but we are precious, and we are purchased with a very high price. The price that Christ paid to purchase the saints is the highest price he could have ever paid. And he did it gladly. He did it gladly because he loves us so much. Next one is 1 Corinthians 12, 27. What does that say? That says, I am a member of Christ's body. Have you ever been a member of a club or something? You're an important part of that. You are an important part of Christ's body, and I'm an important part. We're all different members of the body. You know how the human body has a lung, two lungs, and a heart, and two kidneys, and you know, um, a liver, and a brain, and a pancreas, and all these members of the human body work together to make the whole person you know, animated and, and you can use your intelligence and everything. It, it enables you to use all your gifts. Well, the body of Christ works that way. We're not supposed to be isolated from one another or codependent on one another. We're to be interdependent on one another. And each member is very, very important. Even the members that you don't see, even the members that... Um, you know, are off having trouble, not really doing any um, practical good for the body right now, they're just as important. Maybe they went to get healing. Maybe they've gone to deal with some issues, but they're just as important. So no matter where you are, or what stage you are in in your journey, you are very important and a member of Christ's body. The next one is Ephesians 1, 3 through 8. This says, I have been, past tense, chosen, that means picked out, by God and adopted as his child. So the papers have been signed, all the paperwork's done, and that's have been, that's in the past. So you have been chosen by God. You were chosen by the creator of the universe. Did you know that? If you're in Christ, you were chosen, even if... You were never chosen at P.E. in school when they all played games or soccer or whatever it was. Even if you were the last one and they just said, oh, okay, just we'll just take him or her. That's not how it is with the Lord. He chose you. He chose you. So you need to know that. And he's adopted you as his own child. Colossians 1, 13 and 14. says, I have been past tense, past tense, redeemed, that means made new, and forgiven, past tense, of all my sins, all the way back to the past, all, anything I'm dealing with right now, struggling with, oh, I feel so bad, everything on to the future, and everything inside me down to the subatomic level, forgiven. So you and I live in a continual state of forgiveness. Our being, our whole life has been forgiven. 
our whole sin nature, every root, every connection, every part of it has been forgiven. We live in a state of forgiveness. And that is called the grace of God. Number, or actually the next one is Colossians 2, 9 and 10. So this is one I love because I'm just a mess and all over the place and I've been through a lot of stuff and I've had a lot of healing. But you know how when you take a piece of paper and you fold it and you crease it with your fingernail and then later you come along and you need to use it, but you need it to be uh, have no marks on it, and you straighten it, and you you know uh, try to smooth it out, and you can even get an iron and iron it. That line is still going to be there. That line's still going to be there. So no matter what you do, you still have to deal with the stuff that wants to hang on to you, right? But in spite of that, in spite of that, I and you, we are both complete. In Christ I love that I love the fact that the scripture says we are complete in Christ complete means thoroughly finished it means more than enough it means you are wonderful it means I'm working on you but in your soul but in your spirit I've already perfected you like Hebrews 10 10 says let's go to Hebrews 4 14 through 16 Read that one. This is wonderful too. This scripture says, I have direct access, direct access to the throne of grace through Jesus Christ. Do you know that you have direct access to the throne of grace through Jesus Christ? When you're going through Jesus Christ, there's nothing you have to do. There's nothing you have to do. You can go to him filthy and covered in mud. You can go right to that throne. Why? Because of all the other scriptures I just read you. You're accepted already. He's already justified you. He bought you with a price. You're a member of his body. He couldn't reject his own member of his own body. You've been redeemed and forgiven of all the sins you may be struggling with. You're already complete. So go to that throne of grace. Go and receive mercy and help in time of need. You can go. There's nothing you have to do. You don't have to clean yourself up. You couldn't clean yourself up if you tried. You're just kidding yourself. Okay, so these are some of the scriptures that encourage us to know that we are accepted in the beloved. Um, this is 12 minutes. If I do the whole thing, it's going to might be too long. Well, let's just do it anyway. Okay. I'll try to go quicker. The next section is I am secure. Let's go over those scriptures. Accepted and then secure. And then we'll do significant over here. Okay, secure. Romans 8, 1 and 2. What does that say? You, I'm sure you know what that says. It says, I am free from condemnation. What is condemnation? It means you're under the law and you are condemned and there's nothing you can do. Why? Think about this. Why does Satan always condemn you? And why does Christ say you are free from condemnation? They both know that condemnation paralyzes you. It paralyzes you. It is like a death grip on your throat. And they both know it, okay? So that's why the enemy attacks you with it all the time. And that's why the Lord has taken it off the table. Think about that. And it will help you not to receive condemnation. Romans 8, 28. That says, I am assured that God works for my good in every single circumstance. So no matter what happens, it throws me off. Oh, I may be so upset. God's working it all out for your good and my good. So this one is Romans 8.31. 
339. I am free from any condemnation brought against me, and I cannot be ever separated from the love of God. That reminds me in Hebrews where the Lord, the Lord says, I will never, no, never, ever, 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 ever leave you or forsake you. This is the same thing. I cannot be separated from the love of God. Why? Because over here, we talked about being one spirit. You can't separate two spirits that have been fused together in the spirit realm at the subatomic level. You can't separate them. You cannot do it. So that is really important to know that you cannot be separated from the love of God. 2 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22. What does that say? I have been, past tense, established, anointed, and sealed by God. I have been. He's already done this. He has established you in the faith. That foundation is Jesus Christ, that cornerstone. He has anointed you to do his will. He's anointed you to receive from him. He's anointed you to minister to people. He's anointed you for healing, if that's what you need. And he has sealed you. He's got his seal on you in the spirit realm. And the enemy can see that. And he doesn't like it. So the next thing is... Um, Colossians 3, 1 through 4. That says, I love this. That says, I am, present tense, hidden with Christ in God. I did a video on that. Um, and it was probably called um, Colossians 3, 1 through 4. I don't know, but it was about putting the envelope inside the other one and the other one. And it shows how we are in Christ and Christ is in God. And it's just a cozy thing. Philippians 1 6. That says, I am confident that God will complete the good work he started in me. How do we know he's going to complete it? Well, because he started it. And he's not an incompetent or incomplete or forgetful God. If he starts something, he's going to complete it and it's going to be perfect. That's how we know he's going to complete it because he started it. Okay? Philippians 3.20. I am a citizen of heaven. What? You mean I'm not a citizen of this earth? No, you're not, and I'm not either. Thank God this is not our home. Thank God in heaven this is not our home. Do you know how sad that would be? This is your home, and this was all that you were ever going to experience that's good? Ugh, that would be horrible. I'm excited that I'm a citizen of, a citizen of heaven, and you are excited too. I know it. 2 Timothy 1.7 This says, I have not been given a spirit of fear, which is swirling around out in the world, coming in through the computers and the TVs and the phones and everything. The spirit of fear is real big in the world today. We have not been given that spirit. Tell it to go back to hell where it came from, because the Lord has given you and me a spirit of power. Power. The power of Jesus Christ. The resurrection life of Jesus Christ. And a spirit of love, which overcomes everything, overcomes all things, overcomes evil with good. And a sound mind. We've been given the mind of Christ at salvation. And he has a very sound mind. And so when we're in him, we have a sound mind. 1 John 5.18 I am born of God. He has birthed me as the new creation in Christ. That's how I'm born of God. And the evil one cannot touch me. He cannot touch me. If something slips through the fingers of the Lord, then it's meant to train me up and teach me a lesson. 
that's why it's there. That's why he's allowing it because he's teaching me to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So the evil one cannot touch you. You can allow the evil one to mess with you, but the Lord says the evil one cannot touch you in in other ways, the, the ways that are much worse. Okay, let's do the significant verses. So we've got the I'm accepted verses over here. You're accepted in the beloved. I am secure in Christ verses here. And now we're going to do I am significant. These verses, okay? John 15, 5. That says, I am a branch. Did you know that you're not the vine? Did you know that you are not the vine? Well, that's why it says that we are branches. Branches just hang out, attached to the vine. They're not doing anything. The vine is producing the fruit, and it's passing through them and going out into the world. The branches aren't producing really anything. It's just hanging out in the vine, and it's bearing fruit, but it's not working to do it. It's abiding in the vine. So it says, I'm a branch of Jesus Christ, the true, uh, the true vine, and a channel of his life, just a vessel of his life. We can rest in Christ and let him do all the work through us. Okay, let's do John 15, 6. I have, I'm sorry, 16. I have been, past tense, chosen and appointed to bear fruit. Chosen and appointed to bear fruit. So there's fruit that God has for you to bear as a branch in this world. But he's going to do it through you. It's his fruit, and he's going to do the work. You abide in him and let the process, the natural process take place. 1 Corinthians 3.16. I am God's temple. You are God's temple. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Do you ever really think about that? Do you try to take good care of yourself? Do you know back in the days of the tabernacle and the temple, there was a lot of temple maintenance that went on. There were those who took care of all of these things that had to be maintained in the temple. And our bodies are like that. We have to maintain our temple. And yes, it is just a tent that's going to fall away. Um, but while we're living in it, we need to take good care of it because we're carrying around the Ark of the Covenant inside of us, the Spirit of the Living God. So you are God's temple and I'm God's temple. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. This says, I am a minister of reconciliation for God. So we're working for God or, or ministering for God and we are ministers because we help people that are lost be connected again to their creator. The creation has gone astray. The little sheep, the creation has gone astray and all these little souls need to come back to their creator. And that's why we're put here to help make, them make that connection back to the creator. Okay, Ephesians 2, 6. I am seated with Jesus Christ in the heavenly realm. I am seated. So what does it mean when a king sits down? That means his work is finished. So if we're seated with Christ in the heavenlies, that means our work and our human effort with our human hands and our human understanding has been put to rest. And we are seated with Christ in the heavenlies. How can you be seated with Christ in the heavenlies? If you're in the Sabbath rest. If you're being led by the shepherd. What does the shepherd do with the sheep? He leads them along gently and tells them to lie down in the grass. 
that's what the shepherd does with the sheep. And in that, you can experience being seated with Christ in the heavenly realm because you're not doing anything from your own effort because you know that that is worthless. You know that you know that you know that it is absolutely worthless. Okay, Ephesians 2.10. This one is great. It says, I am and you are God's workmanship. There is a reference there in that workmanship to the word poetry. And so the Lord has a poetic way of doing his workmanship in you. And he sees it as a beautiful thing. Even if you're going through something painful and difficult, he is doing his work in you, and it is a beautiful, poetic thing. And he's doing it with his hands because he is the potter and you are the clay. And he is molding you and making you into the image of his son. And that is good news. Ephesians 3.12, almost done. I may approach God with freedom and with confidence. Okay, what does that say? That's saying if you are accepted and secure and you may approach God with freedom and confidence, what does that mean you need to do before you go before the throne? Nothing. That means you don't have to do anything. You're free to approach the throne in whatever state you are in. You are free. And in that freedom that he has bought for you, you can be confident. Even if you're struggling with something. You can. That's what the blood of Jesus Christ does. People don't understand what the blood of Christ does. They think they have to add to it. They think they have to um, fix it because it's not complete. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would help us to see what the blood of Jesus has done for us. Last one, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Some people call this the ten finger prayer. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The ten finger prayer. So when you know that you're accepted and you know you're secure and you know you're significant, you're going to be more relaxed and trusting of the Lord and you're going to be more surrendered to allow him to do anything through you. And when you don't feel strong enough, which is perfectly fine to be weak and not be able to do something, that's actually a good thing. Then you can say, Lord, I cannot deal with this. Please do this through me. I cannot deal with this. I say this all the time. It's wonderful. So this is the list, by the way, if you wanna pull it up and print it out, who I am in Christ, and it was originally from the Neil Anderson uh, book and all that stuff he did. So you are accepted in Christ. All these scriptures, that's a lot of evidence for that one point. You are secure in Christ and you are significant in Christ. You're very significant, very important. Even if no one has ever treated you like you were very important or you have never felt secure or safe in your life, and even if no one has ever really accepted you, I can really relate to that. Um, even if no one has ever accepted you or you never felt, really felt accepted by anybody, the Lord Jesus Christ calls you significant. He declares that you're secure and he says that he absolutely accepts you unconditionally. Okay, so I hope this is encouraging for you. I want to encourage you in truth because I know a lot of people are having trouble out there and I just want to reach out and give you um, a little bit of encouragement. Okay, so y'all leave comments and I hope y'all have a great day and I'll see you next time.